Hey guys, Jake from Optimus Futures here bringing you a new CQG desktop video. And in today's video, we'll be focusing on the brand new spreadsheet trader that was introduced in update 3.6, which was released on September 21st, 2018. Now the spreadsheet trader is a great new widget that was added to CQG desktop and it essentially combines all the great features of some of the other widgets into one single widget that for organization purposes is absolutely wonderful. So enough talking about it, let me show it to you. So first up, I would suggest opening up a new page. You can do that by heading over to the left hand side here, clicking on the three horizontal bars, the expand sidebar button and going down to add page. From here, we can do an empty page. You can name it whatever you like. We'll keep it as new page, short name NP for now, and we'll click on OK. So now we have a clean blank workspace to work with, and we can now add our spreadsheet trader widget. So click on the add a widget button, scroll down to the trade section, and here you see the spreadsheet trader, and click on that to activate it. Now from here, this is where the great customization aspect of CQG Desktop comes into play. They do have pre-built bundles here or list of all the different future symbols you may want to trade. So if you'd like, you can check out all the available preset lists that they have for you. The indices may be great for those of you that trade the E-mini S&P or some of the other E-mini contracts. As you can see, there's a ton packed in here. Now you can actually create your own list by clicking on the new list button. And now from here, we can head up to the top left by clicking on this plus, or we can simply just click on the big button in the middle of the screen to add our symbols. Once we've clicked on that, we can just manually input what symbols we'd like to enter. So as I said before, for many of you, it is likely that you're trading the e mini s p 500 so we can use cqg symbol of ep this will bring up the e mini s p 500 contract we can select ok i've accidentally added two in there and once you hit ok it'll bring the front month of the current s p 500 contract that we would like to trade so now as you can see here, there's a lot that has been put on the screen. So let me go one by one. First up in our first column, we have the symbol. As you can see, if I hover my mouse or my cursor over the column, it will give me a brief description on what I'm hovering over. Next, we have the last quote or settlement price for the current day. Here we have our current change of the last quote. To the right of that, we can change our order size and you can customize that by simply clicking on it or we can click in the center and manually enter in the order size we'd like to place. Now from here, we have a mini dome actually integrated within our spreadsheet or our quote page right here. So as you can see, under the B, we have our buy side. Under A, we have our ask. And there's two methods here. First, we'll need to adjust the order size. For example, I'll keep mine on at two. And now you can either manually click the buy or the sell at the bid price by hovering over and then simply left clicking. Or you can manually do so by clicking and holding the current price of the specified column that you would like to place an order for and then drag it. So as you can see, once I click and hold and move my cursor around, I can drag my current price around. So for example, if this is the price that I do wanna trade, I can bring it to my bid side and I can either place a stop limit or a buy limit, or I can drag it over to my ass side and then either place a sell limit or a buy limit. It's really up to me or I can do this alternatively with the ask side and click and hold and do the same. I can bring it over to my sell side now and put a sell limit or a buy limit, or I can bring it over to my buy limit and I can place a sell limit as well. 
So just to demonstrate this, I'll bring over my ask side and put a stop and a limit. I'll get a confirmation of whether or not this is the order that I would like to place. And I can place my order now. And as you can see, it is now shown here. Well, it was shown briefly in the working orders field. So any working orders you have here will populate this side right here. And it's for the current instrument, the EP, the e mini SMP, and it will display on the ask side since that is where we placed our order. Now, since my orders were filled, these two fields to the right of our ask side will now populate. So as you can see, I have an open position. And if you click on that, you can either liquidate it or you can open this in another widget to get some more information about it. And then to the right, this is the open trade equity and it'll show you your unrealized loss or profits. Now back to the other side. Let's do this again, but on the bid side. So I click on my bid side. I have my price action with my order quantity. And now I can drag it over to my buy limit. I can place my order here. And as you can see, it was filled. You didn't get the chance to see it in my working orders, but it canceled out the other side here. So I've essentially just liquidated my position. Once again, we can drag it over this side, put it as a sell limit or stop limit. It will indicate to you that this is well below the market price. And it's just giving a confirmation of whether or not you really do want to place this order. Being that I am on a demo account currently, I don't have an issue with this, so I can place my order. Again, it got filled too quick, but if it was a working order, you would see it in this side, in the bid side of your spreadsheet here. Again, you get your fill report. And once again, we have our open positions here on the right-hand side column. And then we have our profits and losses to the right of that. All right, so now for a couple other pieces of information that you may find useful using this widget. I should have mentioned it in the beginning, but I didn't, so I'll be covering it now. You can actually change your order types here that are in your default preferences. Simply click on this field right here, and as you can see, you can change your order types from a stop to a stop loss. You can change the order duration as well. If you hover over this field, as you can see, there are a bunch of preset options that you can choose from. The day, good till cancel, fill in, kill, fill or kill. You have your other options. As you can see, all listed right here. Now, it may be a bit funny or look a little bit weird to you that there's only one current price of the dome that is being displayed on both the bid and the ask side. You can actually expand this further. If you click on this right facing arrow here, underneath your symbol, you can actually expand your dome out further. And you can continue to do so by clicking on this plus button right here. And as you can see, you essentially have a fully functional dome all within your spreadsheet, your quote board here. If this is expanded out too much and you don't need to see all of this current price action, you can simply just click on the minus and it'll minimize it. Clicking on it once more will fully minimize that as you've seen before. Fully minimizing it may actually be beneficial to you if you are trading or watching multiple symbols at once. So this is a great way to stay organized. It's also a great way to watch multiple symbols and to trade through the dome while watching more than one symbol at a time. This essentially just makes it easier for yourselves to organize and stay focused on the symbols you'd like to trade. One last bit of information that I'd like to go over. If you are trading on multiple symbols, you may want a better way to stay organized. You can do so by highlighting your symbol in this box right here. And then if you go over to our far right, 
you'll notice a little paint drop here that's called symbol color by clicking on that you can now associate your symbols with different colors so for example if i wanted to keep track of my yellow symbol which i'll be making the e-mini smp 500 simply click on the yellow color here and now my e-mini symbol is associated with yellow so it is linked to the color yellow and I can focus on the yellow color that is represented with my E-mini S&P 500. Again, this isn't necessary. It's just another way to stay focused on the contracts that you want to trade and another way to stay organized. Thanks for watching. If this video helped, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more informative content related to the futures market.